Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we explored the distributed load testing concept. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will learn how to integrate JMeter with InflexDB and Grafana to monitor the test results while the test is running. These days, most companies are implementing this approach to monitor their JMeter load test results. It's a valuable skill that every performance tester should have. So let's get started right away. First, let's quickly understand the different components involved in this integration. As usual, we will use our JMeter script to generate the required number of threads. All these threads will be sending requests to the JPEG Store demo application. So, we will use the same script that has been used in the last two videos. And then, JMeter will send all the performance metrics to InflexDB. Here, InflexDB has been utilized as a backend listener. Finally, we will use Grafana to visualize those performance test metrics. Here, Grafana will pull those metrics from the Influx database. We have a couple of options to install these components. We can either directly install them onto the OS or we can run them in a container environment such as Docker. Deploying them using Docker is an easy method that may save time and also system resources. So we will be installing them using Docker images. Don't worry, I will share the instructions for both installation methods. Okay. Now let's talk about one of the important elements in this testing model that is InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series database that will collect, store, process and visualize time series data. Any data with a timestamp is time series data. Okay. For example, in the temperature data graph, we have a timestamp associated with each data point. Similarly, when we monitor the cluster, we will gather the data points for regular intervals, right? And also the application logs will associate with a timestamp for each entry. InfluxDB is designed to handle high rate and query loads for time series data. This is completely developed using the Go language. Before we use this component, it is always important to understand the different data elements involved in organizing and storing the time series data in InfluxDB. The first one is organization. In InfluxDB, an organization is a logical grouping or container for users, resources and data. It helps in organizing and managing different aspects of our InfluxDB environment. Now let's talk about buckets. A bucket is a named storage location where time series data is stored. In relational database terms, you can think of it as a database. Buckets allow you to set retention policies, giving you control over how long the data remains stored in that specific bucket. Next we have measurement. A measurement is simply a logical grouping for time series data. In relational database terms, a measurement can be considered as a table. So in one bucket, we can have multiple measurements. Okay. Next one field. The field is nothing but a key value pair that represents the actual data. So each measurement can have multiple fields. Finally, query. It is an operation that retrieves data from InfluxDB. Now let's talk about the next element of this testing model that is Grafana. Grafana is an open source analytics and monitoring platform. It enables you to query, visualize, alert on and explore your metrics, logs and traces wherever they are stored. It provides a flexible and rich interface for creating, exploring and sharing interactive dashboards. One important thing we need to understand is that it does not store the data. Instead, it will actually retrieve data from different data sources and present them. Grafana comes with built-in support for many data sources. If you need any other data sources, you can also install the respective data source plugin. Okay. Now let's quickly look at the steps to add the data source to Grafana. First, we need to search and select the required data source. In our example, we should look for InfluxDB. Next, we need to provide a meaningful name to the data source. This name will be used while querying the data at a later stage. And then we need to provide the data source URL. Along with that, we also need to provide the username, password or API key for authentication purposes. Finally, we need to save the configuration and test it to make sure that there is a connectivity between Grafana and the data source. Now let's go through the demo for setting up these integrations. Okay. So to set up these integration, the very first thing we need to do is we need to install InfluxDB and Grafana components. There are multiple ways to install these components onto our systems. The first method is installing them directly onto OS level and the second method is running them in a container environment. Okay. First we will explore the process of installing installing them onto voice level and later on we will look at the process of running them in a container environment. Okay. So open your Chrome browser and then type influx db download and press enter. So in the search results go to influx data downloads page. 
this is the official website of influx database where we can download the executable okay if you are opening this page for the first time it may ask you to register so fill in your first name last name email address and then click register so in this influx data downloads page we have different sections since we want to install influx db so we need to go to influx db 2x open source time series database section and here they have given the version information that they are going to provide and then the platform because the installation instruction might be different for platform to platform so if we open the platform drop down we can see different os platform information like mac os ubuntu red hat linux windows okay let's say if you want to install influx db on your windows operating system then you need to select the windows binary 64 bit and again here you need to use powershell to follow their instructions okay so once you select that windows binary 64 bit then it will show you the instruction basically you need to copy this command and execute it onto your powershell so that the influx db will be downloaded from their official website and then copied it to your c program files directory okay now let's look at the process of installing grafana so again in the browser type grafana download and then from the search results select the download grafana link and here also we can see the grafana version and they have categorized the instruction based on the different os levels for example for linux they have different set of instructions to install grafana similarly for windows they have different instructions based on our requirement we can choose the appropriate os and then follow their instructions let's say we want to install grafana in windows platform then we need to select the windows details then it will show the instructions for installing grafana on windows platform okay in grafana they also provided a installation guide which is a step-by-step -step instruction for installing the grafana on windows okay you can also follow these instructions and then install the grafana so this is the first method of installing influx db and grafana onto the os level the second method is running them as a content in a container environment so if you want to run any application in a container environment you need to know the docker image information of that particular application okay so all those docker images will be stored in docker hub which is a centralized repository for docker images so if you want to find out if you have any image available for any specific application we need to go to docker hub so in the browser type docker hub and press enter and go to docker hub official website so here we can search the application to see if there is any docker image available for that application okay so let's type influx db then it will show all the results with the name influx db okay so you can see there are 2429 results found with the name influx db so the very first one from this list is the official influx db image okay if you click that link then it will show you the details of that influx db so here they have given details about the influx db and also they have given step-by-step -step instructions for using their image so you can use docker run command to run this influx db in a container environment you can also do some configuration by following the steps provided here and you can also do database setup so all these details are available so you can go through it and then try it out if you are trying to use it for any specific use case okay now let's go back to home page of docker hub and then search for grafana because we also need to run the grafana in a container environment right so search for grafana and again we will see the results with the name grafana so this time we got 7000 plus results with the name grafana so in this results click on the very first image which is supported by grafana so here also we have an instruction to run the grafana docker image in a container environment okay along with these two components we also need application right so we are planning to use jpet store demo application to send the request from jmeter and then capture all the performance metrics so like the previous video we will be installing jpet store demo application as a container so we can also search for that container here by typing jpet store 6 so this is the image that i am going to use to run it as a container okay so if you are also planning to run all these components in a docker environment you need to make sure that in your system docker is already installed okay so if you open terminal or command prompt then type docker hyphen hyphen version which will tell whether we have docker installed or not okay in this case i have docker already installed with a version 20.10.24 if you are not getting this response then that means there is no docker software installed on your laptop again you can go to browser and then type docker download and go to official website of docker so click on the get docker and select the appropriate os like for example if you are planning to install it on a windows so click on the docker windows so it will provide you all the information to install this 
Docker desktop. Okay. So one important thing that you need to understand is that if you are installing InfluxDB Grafana either onto OS level or as a Docker image, the configuration process is pretty much same. Whatever the configuration methods I'm going to show you is going to be the same. Okay. So if you are comfortable to install these components onto OS level, please feel free to do so. Since deploying them as a Docker containers is very easy method. That is why I'm going to follow that method for this demo purpose. Okay. So we can also do two ways to install these components components in a docker environment one through terminal or command line and the second step is opening the docker desktop ui and then here we can download those images and run them as a container okay so i will be following the terminal method because there we just need to issue one command so that will take care of everything so let me minimize this and then go to the terminal so the first one we are going to install is the jpet store demo application so to run the jpet store demo application as a container we need to type docker run so docker run is we are telling docker to run this specific application as a container okay and then we need to provide hyphen d option so this option is we are running this container in a background mode so that we can do other activities in the terminal after that we need to specify a name for this container so since it is a jpet store demo let's type jpet store 6 and then we need to specify port here we are telling docker that we are going to use this port to communicate with this application okay so hyphen p and then port information 8080 and finally we need to specify the docker image so let's type this image name and then press enter first it will look for that image locally if it is not finding that image then what it will do is it will try to pull that image from docker hub and run that image as a container okay i think the process is completed so if you want to see whether this particular application is running as a container we need to type docker space ps so it will show you all the containers that are running locally currently we have only one container this is the container id and this is the image name and then the status of the container and the ports that is listening and the name of that container okay we also have an option called hyphen a which will show all the containers even that those are not running right now i have only one container that is why i'm not seeing any different result but if you are working on different containers and those containers are in stopped state then you can see those information with the option hyphen a okay sometimes you only want to see the container id then you can use ps minus q so that will show you only the container id so these are the different docker commands i'm just sharing so that you will also learn docker along with this integration process so once you deploy the application the next thing is we need to validate whether we are able to navigate different transaction in the user interface so go to chrome browser again and then type http localhost the reason for selecting the localhost is this application is deployed on on this local machine right that is why we are saying localhost and the port that it is listening is 8080 once you press the enter then it will open the application you can click the enter store and then do different navigation steps inside this application okay you can click fish and then select product whatever the user transaction that we have scripted can be verified manually here okay so with this we have completed the process of deploying our application in a container environment and the next step is we need to install influx db in a container environment so again open the terminal let's clean up the screen we basically need to use the same command only thing is we need to specify different image and port information okay so let's type again docker run hyphen d to run the container in a background and then specify the name this time we are going to install influx db so we are specifying influx db name and then port hyphen p by default influx db is going to use 8086 port so we will go with the 8086 colon 8086 and then the image name the image name is influx db okay so once you press the enter then again it will look for that influx db image locally if it did not find then it will grab that image from docker hub and then run it as a container now if we run the docker ps command we will see two containers one for jpet store and another one for influx db okay so once we install the influx db either onto os level or as a container the next step is we need to do some configurations okay so those configurations can be done using the influx db user interface so go to the browser and then type http localhost port 8086 because our influx db container is running are listening the port 8086 that is why i'm using the port 8086 once you press enter we will be landing into the welcome screen so here we need to click get started and then the first step 
we need to do is we need to set up a initial user. So type the username. So I'm typing puff test and then type the password and also retype the password and you need to provide the organization name. So I'm going to say PCYE, nothing but performance center of excellence and then the initial bucket name. So let's say JMeter. Okay. Once you fill this information, then click continue. Then we will get this message saying that you are ready to go. When we create the initial user, it will also give a default token. We will not be using this token. We will create our own token so that you will also understand the process of creating or generating a new tokens. Okay. In this screen, click quick start. Now we need to create our own API token because from JMeter, we are going to connect to this database using API. So to create an API token, we need to click the load data and then select API tokens. So by default, it will show the token that it generated automatically after setting up the initial user. You can click the generate API token and select all access API token. Then it will ask you to provide the some description to that new token. Let's say JMeter integration token. Okay. And then click save. It will provide you the actual token. So here it is also providing a note saying that make sure to copy your new custom API token. You won't be able to see it again. That means once you close this window, it will not show you this token information. So you need to make sure by copying it or storing it some safe place. Okay. So let's copy it in a notepad. And after generating the API token, the next step is we need to do some configuration inside the JMeter. Okay. So let's open the JMeter. I have already opened the JPEG store demo script. So the way we are going to integrate Inflex TV with JMeter is by adding a backend listener. Okay. So to add a backend listener, we need to right click the thread group add and then go to listener, select backend listener. So in this backend listener, we have to provide the configuration information so that when we run the scripts, what JMeter will do is it will send all those performance metrics to that listener. In our case, Inflex DB. Okay. So in the backend listener implementation, select Inflex DB backend listener client. And then in the parameters, we need to configure some parameters. The first one is Inflex DB URL. So we need to specify the API URL so that JMeter will send the data to Inflex DB using that API. Okay. So if we go to the Inflex DB official website, Inflex DB write API, and then select the first link, write data with the Inflex DB API. So one important thing we need to understand is in the past with the older versions like Inflex DB 1.8, so the API format is little bit different. So if you are using Inflex DB 1.8 API, we need to provide this information like the local host port and then write and the, the database name. However, if you are using Inflex DB 2.0 onwards, then you need to add API V2. Okay. Since the installed version of Inflex DB is 2.7.5. So we should not be using the 1.8 API format. By default, when we add the backend listener in JMeter, it will give you the format for 1.8. Okay. So we need to update this format so that JMeter will send all these metrics to Inflex DB. So let's change the host to change as the local host because our Inflex DB has been deployed in our local host. In case if you deployed this Inflex DB into a different machine, then you need to provide the IP address of that mission. Okay. And it is listening on port 8086. So we don't need to change anything. And then we need to specify API slash V2 slash write. And here we need to provide ORG nothing but organization. So we have given PCY as our organization and bucket. So in Inflex TB, a database is called as a bucket. So we need to specify our bucket information. So our bucket name is JMeter. So that is why I have given the name as JMeter. And next thing is we need to update the application name. So let's give some meaningful name like JPEG store demo because all this data belongs to JPEG store demo. And the measurement name is JMeter. No need to make any changes there. And the test title also change it to JPEG store demo. And one final configuration is we need to configure the API token. Otherwise, InflexDB will not allow JMeter to write the data into the JMeter bucket. Okay. So to add the additional parameter, just click on add and then type inflex db token. It is a case sensitive variable name. So you need to make sure that you type in the same way. Only the T is the capital and rest everything is in small case. Okay. And then paste the generated API token here. Okay. So let's copy the token and then paste it here. Once you paste it, let's click save. 
now we are good to start the test so once we start the test then what jmeter will do is it will send all the data to influx db okay so let's go to thread group and then see what is the thread properties configuration so i have five threads running for six minutes and then i have one summary report listener configured okay so let's clear the results and then click start button if there is any issue with the backend listener configuration then we can see that in the logs for example here it is telling that fail to send data to influx db server so let's stop the test and try to understand why it is complaining that it is failed to send the data to influx db okay so uri does not specify the valid host name so it is complaining the api url is wrong so we missed one forward slash here that is why it is complaining so let's save this again and clean up the results and rerun the test now if you see there are no errors in the logs everything looks good all the five threads are running and if we see the summary report we can see all the metrics now we need to go back to influx db and then go to data explorer here we can view that data so first we need to select the bucket so jmeter is our bucket in the measurement select jmeter and then it will show you all the fields that jmeter is sending to influx db so you can select all the fields or if you want to select any specific one to view the data, you can select those fields as well. So I'm selecting all of them here and then the application JPEG to demo. After selecting all this information, click submit. Then Influx DB will show the data in a graph format. Okay. We can also visualize all the data in Influx DB, but when compared with Grafana, it has some limited capabilities. That is why everybody is using Grafana for visualization. Okay. So with this step, we have completed the Influx DB integration with JMeter. So we have executed the test and JMeter is sending successfully the metrics to Influx DB, right? Now, the final step that we need to do is we need to set up Grafana so that we can see this data in a more meaningful way, okay? So to set up Grafana, the first thing we need to do is we need to install it. We can install it either OS level or we can follow the same Docker method. So let's go back to terminal and then type the command docker run because we want to install this as a docker container so after docker run specify d to run this container in a background mode and specify name so here it will be a grafana because we want to install grafana right and then hyphen p we need to specify the port by default grafana will use 3000 so let's keep the default one 3000 3000 and then specify the image name so image name is grafana slash grafana once you type this command press enter then again, it will look for this image locally. If not, then it will pull that image from Docker Hub and then run it as a container, okay? Now type Docker PS, we will be seeing three containers, one for JPEG store and another one for Influx TV and another one for Grafana. See, the installation process is very easy, right? In compared with installing these executables onto OS level, we need to download and then click install. And then after that, we need to follow several instructions. Sometimes we may also need to do some additional configurations. To avoid all those headaches, we are just simply using Docker containers because this software is packaged as a unit. We are just using that unit and running it locally in our system as a container, okay? So after installing Grafana as a container, the next step is we need to do some configuration. So let's open the browser and then type HTTP colon colon localhost and then port 3000 because Grafana is listening the port 3000. Okay, so after typing the URL, press enter. So then we will get this screen. Then Grafana will ask us to enter the username and password. So by default, this image is, comes up with admin as a username and password also admin. So you can use admin admin for username and password and then click login. After that, it will ask you to change the password for security reasons. If you want to change, you can type the new password here or if you don't want to change, you can also skip it, okay? So let me change the password and then hit submit. So that will change the password. After logging into Grafana, the very first step we need to do is we need to configure data source because Grafana does not store any data. It will only get the data from different sources and then it will visualize inside the Grafana, okay? So if you want to know more about those data sources, you can click the learn how in the docs link and then go through the documentation. So to set up any data source, we need to click the menu and then go to data sources. After that, we need to click add data source. Here it will show all the built-in data sources supported by Grafana. So here we need to look for InfluxDB. Since it is showing as a third data source, we can click directly or if it is not showing here, then you can type InfluxDB here, then that will show the data source information. So once, once we have the required data source, in our case InfluxDB, then we need to 
click the data source and here we need to configure the influx db information okay so we need to give some meaningful name here so let's say influx db jmeter and then we need to select the query language there are three options to choose one influx ql sql and flex so we should use flex because flex is an alternative language to influx ql and also sql language flex uses functional language patterns making it incredibly powerful flexible and able to overcome many of the limitations that influx ql query language has okay so that is why i have chosen flex and in the http section we need to provide the influx db url okay so here also it is using api method to pull the data from influx db and present it in the grafana http colon double forward slash and then local host 8086 one important thing here is that in this url we should not specify local host because local host translate to the ip address 127.0.0.1 however our Influx DB is not using that IP address. It has a different IP address because it is running inside the container. Okay. For testing purpose, just use the local host and then see what is the error message that we are going to get. So after typing the URL, we don't need to give allowed cookies timeout since we are doing a demo. And then we are also using HTTP method. So we don't need to give any authentication methods. However, if you deploy this in HTTPS mode, then you may need to provide the credential information. And then finally, we need to provide the influx DB details. So the organization name is PCOE and then token, the token that we have created, just copy the token and paste it here and the default bucket name. So our bucket name is JMeter. Once you fill the information, click save and test. So here Grafana is telling that connection refused error while reading the buckets because when we use this URL, what Grafana is trying to do is it will try to connect to this IP address. Our influx DB is not using this IP address. That is why we got this error. So in this URL, instead of localhost, we need to specify the IP address of the influx DB. You might be thinking how we can find out that IP address because it is running inside the container, right? So there is a way to find out the IP address of those containers. So let's go back to the terminal and then type docker inspect and give the container name. Okay. So it will provide you all the information related to the container. It is giving a lot of information. So it will be a little challenging to go through each and every line to understand where exactly the IP address. We have a workaround to extract the IP address from this response. So let's Type again docker inspect influx db after that pipe grep hyphen i ip address. And then now we have the ip address here. So our influx db is using this particular ip address. So if you are specifying local host, then it is assuming that you are using 127.0.0.1. So that is why we got that issue. So let's copy this ip address and then paste it here. Instead of local host, we will specify the ip address. Okay, now click save and test. This time, Grafana was able to connect to our influx db and then it found three buckets. Okay. So with this step, we have completed the Grafana configuration. And the next step is we need to visualize the data that is available inside the influx database. Okay. So we need to go to explore from the menu and then here we need to type query. Since flex is a new query language to us, we don't know how to write the query, right? So for that reason, what Grafana did is they have provided some simple queries using that simple query. We can learn the way to write the query and then we can write our own queries okay so to get that simple query we need to click sample query and then select simple query so this is the query format so if you want to view the data so you need to write this query because grafana will send this query to influx db and influx db is able to understand this query and then get the data back to us okay so in this query we need to update some information like bucket is not db rp it is j meter and then the measurement is also j meter and the field so what is the field that you want to view here so if you go back to our influx db we can see multiple fields right like here max pct 90 pct 95 average so let's take the 95th percentile response time so we will see the 95th percentile response time as a graph here so type pct 95.0 okay and then click run query so it will show you the data this is the 95th response time for the test that we have executed i believe the test might be completed that is why we are not seeing any live metric so let's go back to jmeter and clear the results and start the test so now this time we will see the live data so here in the run query configure as five seconds so that you don't need to click run query again and again it will automatically refresh the data after five seconds see now 
we are seeing the new data points. So this way we can view the performance test matrix while the JMeter test is running. I hope the complete process is clear to you. In case if anything is not clear, please feel free to leave a comment. Okay. So whenever we are doing the JMeter load test, opening Grafana and going to explore and creating this kind of visualization is a quite tedious task, right? Because we might be running multiple tests per hour releases. So to overcome that issue, what we need to do is we need to set up some dashboards. So dashboards are nothing but a group of visualization panels. So you can create some visualizations and then save them as a dashboard so that whenever you are running the test, you simply open the dashboard and view those metrics. Okay. Right now we are only viewing the 95th percentile, right? So to create a dashboard in Grafana, again, you click the menu and then go to dashboards. Since we don't have any new dashboards here, it is showing the create dashboard button. If you have some other dashboards already created, then it will show you the list. In that case, you need to click new. Since we don't have anything, we can click the create dashboard and then it will ask you whether we want to add visualization or we want to import a dashboard. There are other performance testers who already created some beautiful JMeter dashboards, which we can reuse them instead of creating it from the scratch. Okay. We will go through that process later on. First, we will try to create our own dashboard. So click add visualization here and then select data source in FlexDB JMeter. Now we need to do the same thing here. So let's select the simple query and then fill in all the information like the bucket as JMeter and then measurement as JMeter and the field is PCT95.0. Okay. Once you filled it, click refresh, then it will show the data. So we also want to give the meaningful name to this panel. So on the right hand side, we have different options available. The first one is if you want to select different visualizations, you can select it. Since I want to see this 95th percentile in a line diagram, I will leave it as time series and then panel title should be 95th percentile response time and description. If you want to add some description, you can add it. The moment we type the title, it is showing here, right? And then you have also some other configuration options to configure this panel like legend access and then graph styles. So you can use different styles. So once you fill all this configuration, then click save, then it will ask you the dashboard name. So let's say JMeter test dashboard and then it will ask you the folder information. Let's keep it in the dashboard. So click save. So we have our new dashboard with one panel. So whenever you do the test and you want to monitor 95th percentile, then you can open this dashboard and view the metrics. But in general, we will have multiple panels because we don't want to see only one metric, right? We want to see different metrics. Like we want to see average response. We want to see failures. We want to see throughput and so on. So what you need to do is you need to create different panels and configure different metrics so that whenever we are executing the JMeter load test, we can open this dashboard and understand how the test is happening. Okay. Now let's add another panel quickly to understand the process one more time. So click add and then click visualization. Here we need to select the simple query and fill in all the information like JMeter and then the measurement is also JMeter. This time we want average response time. So let's type AVG. So AVG is the one of the field here. That's why I'm using AVG to get the average response time. Okay. So this is the average response time. Let's type the title name as average response time. We will also change the line style to make it little different. So let's select the line width as this and also fill the opacity. And you can also select the line style. If you want dots, you can also select like this. Okay. Once you're done with your configurations, click save and then save. So it will save this panel in our JMeter test dashboard. So if you go back to JMeter test dashboard, we can see two panels, one for average response time and another one for 95th percentile. Okay. Let's configure one more panel. Okay. So click add and then visualization. So this time we want to see active threads. So we will go to simple query and then type J meter as a bucket. And then measurement is also J meter. And finally type the field name is max 80. Again, if you go to inflex TV, we can see the fails, right? So max 80 is the one of the field, which will give the active threads information. So since these are the numbers, I don't want to see it in a line graph. So I want to change it to stats. I only want to see number five because I'm running the test with five threads. Okay. 
So let's change the title as active threads. And then I don't want this line graph. We can go to stat styles and then change the color mode to background gradient and also select the graph mode to none so that we will only see the number. Okay, let's click save and then click save. Go to dashboard so we will have this graph as well. Okay, so like this you can configure as many tiles as you want based on the requirement or the analysis that you would like to do in your performance test runs. Okay, if you are new to Grafana and you don't know what metrics to configure, right? You can make use of the existing dashboards created by some other performance testers. So you can go to browser, type Grafana dashboards, and in the search results, go to the first link. And here, Grafana is giving different dashboards information. Since we want dashboards for JMeter, so in the search bar, type JMeter and press enter. Here you can see these are all different JMeter dashboards developed by different performance testers. Let's go to this particular performance testing dashboard, and here we can see the different information, what are all the different metrics that they have configured, right? And who developed it, when they have developed it, how many downloads, all that information can be seen here. So this dashboard can be imported into Grafana two ways. One, by downloading the JSON of this dashboard. The another way is copying the dashboard ID. So that information can be seen here. The dashboard ID is this. And if you want to download the JSON, you can click the download JSON. Okay, so let's go back to Grafana and then go to dashboards and click on the new and then select import. So here it is asking to upload the JSON or it is asking to provide the ID of the dashboard. So let's provide the ID of the dashboard. So let's copy the ID to clipboard and then paste it here. After that, click load. So it will import the dashboard directly. So you don't need to do anything. Okay. And it is giving some options like to configure the name of the dashboard. You can leave as is or if you want to change it to a different name you can change it as well okay and finally we need to select the data source so select inflex db jmeter and then click import you can see different panels already created for us so we don't need to do anything we just need to make use of these panels and then do the analysis if you want to add some more panels you can also very well add it here so to see the data we need to do some more configurations like we need to select the bucket so it is jmeter and then application is jpet store demo so here we can see number of users were five i think the test is stopped so that is why the active number of users is showing zero and then transaction count from the last it is 900 there are some 172 errors there were 19 transactions were failed even if you can see data for different graphs as well right so this is the easiest way to get started with the Grafana dashboards. And if you want to know how these panels have developed, so you can select any specific panel, click on the three dots and then go to edit. Here you can find the query. So this is another way to learn writing the query. So you can import any existing dashboard and then go through the query information and learn from there. Okay. So with this, we have completed the JMeter integration with InflexDB and Grafana. So once you are done, if you want to clean up this environment, you don't want Grafana, InflexDB, JPEG Store running on your laptop as a container, then you can clean them up. So if you go back to terminal and there is one particular command that we can use to clean up the entire environment. So that is docker ps hyphen aq. So docker ps is to list all the containers running on the system. A is for all the containers, even if something is in stop state. And then Q is to get the container ID. After that, we need to specify pipe and then X hours docker stop. So what we are doing is we are taking those container ID information and then we are passing it to the next command, which is docker stop. And again, after that, we are passing the output to the next command, which is docker rm to remove that containers. If you are not using this one command, then what you need to do is you need to execute three commands and copy that information one after another. Okay. Once you click enter, then it will remove all the containers. So if you type docker ps, you won't be seeing any containers because we have already removed it. After removing the containers, we also need to remove the images because those images are already stored in locally, right? So to see the list, we need to type docker images. It will show you all the images that are stored locally. Okay. So to delete these images, we need to type docker rmi and then dollar docker images aq. It will delete all those images locally. So if I type again docker images, I won't be seeing any images. Okay. So next time if I'm trying to redeploy the same image as a container, then docker will try to download that image from docker hub and then will install it locally. Okay. 
So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.